Last week, Jesse gave you her favorite moments from season four, and now it's my turn. From style rankings to some of my most unhinged moments, here are a few of my favorites from this past year. As always, we are created by New Voice Studios, brought to you by Talk North, Grain Belt, Jim Beam, Livia, and Royal Credit Union. This is season four, episode 187. At Jim Beam, they know the importance of tradition, like chanting, let's play hockey prior to the start of each game or playing the state of hockey anthem after a wild win. This season, raise one to your fan family with the bourbon that invites us all to come as friends and leave as family. Jim Beam Bourbon Whiskey, the official bourbon whiskey partner of the Minnesota Wild and XL Energy Center. Drink smart, Jim Beam Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey, 40% alcohol by volume, copyright 2021, James B. Beam Distilling Company Incorporated, Fairmont, Kentucky. Hello, everybody. Did I do that right? Huh? You like that? I had to do it. Without Jesse here this episode, I just had to seize the opportunity. It just felt right to carry that on in her honor, if you will. But what's up, guys? It is Kirsten Kroll here, here to give you Kirsten's favorite moments from season four. Now, this season was my very first year as an official bar down beauty. So it was a really fun year. I learned a lot. And we got to talk to a lot of really cool people. We got to do a lot of really cool things, go to a lot of hockey games. Jesse even dragged me to a Minnesota Gophers game at Mariucci. So there's a lot of takeaways from this season. And as we gear up for season five, I'm just really excited to continue to see how we can grow, how we can build this and what new cool and fun things we've got coming. And five is my favorite number. So I think that means season five is going to be one of our best yet. But before we get too ahead of ourselves and talk about what's to come, let's take a little bit of a trip down memory lane. Kirsten's version, if you will, had to throw in a Taylor Swift reference because what else am I good for around here? Starting with one of my favorite episodes from this past year. We're going to go to episode 159 when we had Sarah Sivian on the show. Now, that might be a name you are very familiar with. If not, head over to Bleacher Report, check out some of her stuff. So I just, I love Sarah Sivian because she is just so fun in what she does. She is the epitome of making sports fun, and it really stands out in her writing, most infamously her style ranking. So take a look for yourself at our discussion and also me and Jesse making a case to maybe one day get on there ourselves. Great for you, is it? See, like, because as you'd mentioned, you've been a beat reporter, you get to, but you've brought such a different air to it, a different personality, something that we're begging the NHL to bring more of, right? I mean, how have you balanced kind of the fun in reporting when you're on the beat and to make sure that you're staying authentic and true to yourself? Or was that kind of a soul searching moment? I know for me, I have struggled immensely with it, right? Because right now the sphere of sports media in general doesn't look like what they taught us in journalism school at all. So I'm like, oh, am I doing this wrong? Am I doing this right? And like the old people saying you're doing it wrong and the young people say I'm doing it wrong. And I'm like, what am I? I'm just going to do this. I'm just going to do me. Uh, how did you come to that transcendence? Exactly. Yeah, that's such a good point. At the end of the day, you really have to just decide like what you're going to do and stick with it. And if, if it sounds good to you, you can know, like you got to trust yourself, but it's so true. We're kind of in a no man's land. And I think <laughs> just like not getting too wrapped up in feedback can actually be good sometimes. Right. Because I, my problem was like my last year at the athletic, I think I just got so obsessed with like taking it to the next level or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, if something doesn't perform well, that's going to happen when you're writing three to four times a week. Right. Like, and that's mm -hmm. okay. You need kind of those bad stories or bad ideas to just keep it saying, okay, cross that one off the list. That didn't work. Try as many things as you want. Um, I definitely it helps to not be married to a certain idea so much and be flexible. That's mm -hmm. what I'd say. Well, one idea that has worked without further ado, this is what the people want to talk about <laughs> the style rankings. First off, how do me and Jesse get on there? This oh. is true. Are you going to, I would like to request that you start some sort of sports media today. I'm doing a terrible presentation minus it's the white Cavs, which is badass in itself. But how do we get reporters on there? Cause I think Kirsten and I have a good shot at being top each and every week. You do. JT Brown started it. He 
has ended up on the list more than once and I've made exceptions. So I don't know, <laughs> go all out on a theme night and you might be okay. selected. I try to make hard and fast rules to this. Then I'm like, cause people take it seriously. I never <laughs> took it seriously, but now I have to. So it's, it's like a badge of honor. Now I feel yeah. like when guys see themselves on it, like it's like a pat on the back, a thing of pride. Um, I would, however, like to see some wild players on there. No fault of yours. They just, they need to take it up a notch. What would yeah. you, if a wild player were to make it, I know you mentioned Ryan Reeves has really upped the level there. What what would they need to do? Because right now it's all beanies, ties, dress coats. Like they all look like t- clones. Of very Minnesota, very Minnesota vanilla boring. Sorry. <laughs> it is Minnesota, but it's also cold. So I get it. But then you see Winnipeg and every day in Winnipeg, it's like Adam Lowry and a few others are all like, stepping up so really no excuses you got to up like the easiest way would be to up your hat game right like everybody has a boring beanie but what if you had a beanie that's like bright colors like Patrick Line I don't know but also stay true to yourself I will say Reeves has made it a few times and he is really good with his fashion without being crazy about it like he Mm -hmm. just has some really well-fitted suits I'd say that and I'd say the social media, I really like the social media team in Minnesota, but at the same time, they do a lot of black and white or like entrance photos that you can't really see the outfit. And that makes more of an impact than you'd think. Like for last year, the entire year, the Maple Leafs didn't post anything and everyone would get mad at me. I'm like, I can't, do you want me to go to Scotiabank Arena? I will, I'll take pictures myself, but they'll kick me out. So that this year they started doing it and now they're on the style ranking. So sometimes social media managers just got to kick it up. Can this I just is all say, very good information. I'm taking notes. Um, but Jesse has a point right after, but quick question. Would a fedora help? Like, no, no, that, <laughs> that is past its prime. Oh, I'm trying to picture any, like Kirill Kaprizov walk, walking in with a fedora. <laughs> like, oh no, that kid loves a beanie, loves his beanie. Um, I was going to say what sums up Minnesota wild style is going back to the bubble when they could have done track suits. They could have done anything. And they went with like these white polos and like khakis and granted leadership in the locker room has changed since then. But I was like, this is the worst thing I have ever witnessed in my entire life. Or like they always take the safe route. I feel like Minnesota in general from team play to like things, which is so ironic because I think behind the scenes, they're not like they're very fun. Would you ever, Sarah, consider and I could be your photographer, at least for the Minnesota Wild. These guys have good style. I've told Kirsten this after morning skate or like after practice, they look nice. They got good shoes. Like we're usually talking about kicks. We're talking about sweats, like everything fits very nicely. Is that something that you're ever going to dip your toe into? Again, I'm sure the photos are hard to come by, but just something to be considered. Shout out for our Minnesota boys here. I love how hard you guys are riding for them. I, yeah, send me some pictures and I'll do it and, or get me in contact with them. I've gotten a few texts from like numbers. It's like my agent gave me your number. Um, I have a really cool shoe collection. If you're ever in X city, like let's do a tour. I'm like, yes, I would love to do all this content. And the funny thing is I'm not like some fashionista. Like, I think that's the funniest part of all this. I do have an appreciation for fashion, but I usually wear a sweatshirt to the rank. I, I that's just, I don't have the funds. But at the same time, it's just I wanted to showcase personality in the league. And it's the easiest way to do it is like because they don't have to say anything because you know how much of a like we before I sport, especially in Minnesota or any of these uh, big markets. It is they they want to be humble and they want to represent the team. But fashion I've seen is a way some of these players that are traditionally very humble can express themselves without saying anything. I seriously love that you have agents texting or getting <laughs> numbers heated. to it's you. Heated. Like that is, is just, I don't even have words for that. Evander Kane commented on one of them and was like, this is biased. I'm like, you know what? Yeah, it is We're against you. Sorry. <laughs> They're in the middle of contract negotiations. Like send yeah. me to a team that gets good <laughs> pictures of me walking into a game. Like this is taken on. Did you imagine it would take on the life it is? I mean, as we mentioned no. earlier, Hockey's certainly trying to be cool in its own slight way, and you're a big part of that. I was watching the Flames game once, and um, Nikita Zadorov was chirping me. He was like, <laughs> I don't know if she has the best style opinions. I was, it was so <laughs> funny. I, then I was like, oh, my God, I can't believe like he mentioned my name and knew what this was. So, My one goal as we head into this new year is for a Minnesota Wild player to make the style rankings Stay tuned. Hopefully it'll happen Um, if they were to have a best beanie competition. I'm sure Minnesota Wild player would come away with that. But 
for now, let's head into my next favorite moment from this season. And now it very much feels like a blip on the radar that this even happened. Um, A short moment in time wasn't long, but it was really fun while it lasted. And this, what I am talking about, is not so much an episode as one of our instant reactions to when the Minnesota Wild acquired Ryan Reeves back in November. And of course, when I thought of Ryan Reeves, the one thing I had to talk about was his infamous fight with Marcus Felino, which gave us one of the most iconic photos in sports history. Find out a little bit more of what I'm talking about right here. Now bringing in another force who can really back up Felino. I think that's huge. And also, um, can I get confirmation on this? Was it Ryan Reeves who like had pushed Marcus Felino up against yeah. the glass in a game? Yeah. So can yeah. we? Like, I think he circle? absolutely that game. It was the first game, the season uh, opener against the Rangers when the Rangers potted seven goals on Mark Andre Fleury. He like manhandled Marcus Felino. Like they both fought, and it was like a one two. Marcus was actually like, All right, man, I'm good. Thank you. Like Reeves was respectful about it. So there is that. I completely forgot about that. Jesse, I need you to ask Felino about that. I just, I want to know about that dynamic now, having had that happen, because you don't see Marcus Felino get it handed to him. So now them being teammates, like I just, I love that. I love it. And I'm, yeah. I'm, ex- I, this is exciting. I'm happy about it. This was a great move. Ryan Reeves, thank you for your time here in Minnesota. We will miss you. But now we also have Pat Maroon. So excited to see what he has to bring to the table. But that's now going to lead us into my third favorite moment from this season. It was episode 145 with Kevin Gorg. For me, why I picked this one out was just because whenever you talk to Kevin Gorg, he is a guy who makes you feel positive, who gives you hope, who puts a smile on your face. And also, I think it's hilarious how much he chirps Jesse and just thinks she's bad luck. Uh, You guys might know what I'm talking about if you remember her predictions this season where she wasn't allowed to pick the Minnesota wild per her contract with Kevin Gorg. So here is just a little bit from episode 145. Love it. Kevin Gorg. One final question for you. The hardest of hard questions. Hmm. Any good movies out there lately? You know, (laughs) well, it's important. I agree. Um, a, A sneaky good movie that I saw this week One of my all-time favorite actresses is Sigourney Weaver. And there's a movie called The Good House. And it's off the beaten path. Kevin Kline, uh, big role in this movie as well. And their chemistry from (laughs) off the screen translates right onto the screen. And uh, it's a fabulous movie. And I'm not going to give you a movie tout on The Good House, but I'm going to point you in the direction of the, the coolest new option for a movie theater in town. It's the old that is the new, the remodel in Edina, 50th in France. The new man <laughs> theater there is spectacular. They've got a, a bar. They've got four screens and an escalator and real butter on the popcorn. Go see the good house. Go to the Edina theater. I know some people get to go to their fancy weekends in Lutz, and that's really cute and fun. And we're going to wear flannel and we're going to have a little wine. And all that. That's great. Kristen, we're happy for you. We're not jealous at all. Um, not at all. But the rest of us will be suffering through the rain of the Twin Cities and a movie theater and a dining. That's where I'm headed. I love it. Come for the hot hockey takes from Kevin Gord. Let's stick around for those movie takes. Can't wait to hopefully catch up with Kevin Gorg again soon as we head into season five. I'm going to put that on the list. So Jesse, take note. We need to reach out to Kevin Gorg. Um, But my most favorite moment, I would have to say, from this entire season, and this isn't an episode, but more a piece of content that we put out. And I know I can do that because Jesse did it in her favorite episodes last week. If you haven't checked it out yet, go watch. But it was our season four promo, our chirp off. So this one's kind of like a twofer. First off, I realized I'm really good at chirping in this promo. So it was really fun being at Tria on the bench, just kind of friendly chirping with Jesse. But also there is a moment when we did the water tortilla slap challenge on skates and I am choking. That was not fake. I actually was choking. (laughs) Um, I'm going to say less. Just you can take a look for yourself. Must be like a fantasy podcast for you, playing with your favorite co-host. You should spend as much time working on your chirps as you do your tan. I've heard better chirps out of a dead bird. Your hockey takes are about as good as Nickelback. 
I heard you sucked at the last podcast you were on, too. You take more selfies than Chris Lindahl has billboards. You smell like nachos and you look like you're stoned. We are already halfway through my favorite moments from season four. Stick around and I will take you through my final four favorite moments from this year. What's going on, guys? Jesse Pierce here to tell you about an extension of Livia Days that Livia Weight Loss Control Centers have. It's the best deal of the summer. If you join today, you get 50% off your own personalized program. Now is the time to get healthier, get active, get out there, and enjoy the summer, you guys. I'm down more than 20 pounds in my own weight loss journey, and you could lose up to 10 pounds or more in just your first two weeks. It's been fantastic. I'm keeping this journey going. You will, too, with the help of Livia Weight Control Centers. Call 855-GO-LIVIA or visit Livia.com. That's 855-GO-LIVIA or L-I-V-E-A dot com. Join today. They've been voted Minneapolis's best weight loss program year after year. Find out why. Sign up today and let them know Bardown Beauties and Jesse Pierce sent you. Welcome back, guys. We made it to segment two. And I'm really excited for these next episodes that I have picked out to talk to you guys about. I, I don't even know how much introduction this next one needs. We're going to go to episode 168. In my notes, I labeled this one, the one where Flurry and Bennington almost fought. Me and Jesse had a fun conversation about this one, just talking about one, let goalies fight. I want to see some goalie fights in the National Hockey League, but also we gave our thoughts on Jordan Bennington as well. Take a look. Speaking of what we saw last week with the Minnesota Wild, not to harp on it too much, but I'm still very upset at the NHL officiating for not letting Marc-Andre Fleury have his one fighting moment, literally, with Jordan Bennington. Let the goalies fight. Let them at it, especially with the sweetheart that is Marc-Andre Fleury. Yes. It's great for the game. It is. It was incredible. Plus, can I, like, swear on here? Is that a thing? Yeah. Yeah, f- Bennington. Oh, f- Bennington. Sorry, you're gonna have to bleep that out. I'm sorry. I'm. <laughs> I don't like him. He Sometimes just... I drop an s bomb here and there. You went full board, but I'm here for I it. Did. We yes, can bleep absolutely. it. Absolutely, that's fine. But no, that guy is just such. I I am gonna censor myself now. I'm gonna hold myself back a little because I came out really harsh. Um, it, it did. I I needed that. No, like just what. There's nothing appropriate. I'm just going to stop myself because I'm going to. He's he is. He's unglued. He's unhinged. It's how he's been. It's funny. I had a chance to chat with Marc-Andre Fleury the next day or at practice, I guess, rather on Friday. And he was like, that's what he does. Right. And and you all heard it on the mic'd up, too. But he's like, but that is that's who he is. So why can't I just go down there and do it? And it was just so funny because he just Marc-Andre Fleury does. He has a permanent grin on his face, like and not in a eating type of way but in like a genuine smile I'm just happy to be here and I'm actually pretty good like I just I'm so bummed for him because that would have been fantastic to watch I mean everybody loves a goalie fight let him go I don't understand why maybe in season five I will learn to be a little more controlled in some of my takes I don't know I make no promises But one thing that I do feel that I bring to this podcast, that's my job, is to ask some of the real hard-hitting questions. And I feel like I did this when we had Matt Boldy on the show early on in season four. We found out some of his likes and dislikes, one that kind of goes against mainstream culture as well. Watch this to find out what I'm talking about. Jesse alluded to it earlier in the show too, but huge fall girls over here. Do you get into the... Yeah. fall festivities when you have time or find oh. yourself enjoying a nice little pumpkin spice latte or flavor <laughs> anything not much i'm not uh i'm not a big pumpkin fan or pumpkin flavored <laughs> stuff so i uh, i stay away from that but i uh i've done my fair share of of the fall festivities growing up with my family and stuff so i'm i'm definitely not a stranger to it go to halloween costume what has it been what is oh. it um when I was growing up and I was young, it was a Power Ranger. But uh which one? Whatever, whatever the, one either, I liked any of the at colors, the time. Yeah. 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 I, I was always Kimberly, the pink one. So that's why I was asking. Yeah. <laughs> I was I was usually red or blue. Nice. Yeah, whatever, uh, whatever one I liked more at the time. So 
but recently it's it's been a mix so we'll have to find a good one for this year hey you know i'm sure you could round up a couple of po- fellow power rangers on this minnesota oh, wild sure. squad to uh, sure. to get it going And speaking of Matt Boldy, we talked a little bit more about him and a couple of his friends in episode 162, specifically the one where the boys went to Cabo and got cornrows. Now this, I just remember waking up and looking on my social media and seeing this photo circulating of Brandon Duhame, Matt Boldy, and I believe I'm probably going to say this wrong. I want to say it was Mason Shaw. might not have been Mason Shaw. As I'm saying that out loud, it doesn't feel right. But regardless, when they took like that boy band photo, like band album cover of them with cornrows in Cabo, me and Jesse gave our thoughts on that. Take a look. Plenty of home games that you can check out for your Minnesota Wild. Right now they are on break. Let's start with the travelers. About half the team told us before the break that they were going to Cabo. We're seeing the social media posts. You're seeing all the guys uh, and wives, girlfriends, buddies, what have you. Um, How fun has it? They look like they're having a pretty solid time in Mexico, Kirsten. Uh, A little too much fun, maybe. Connor Dewar, (laughs) Matt Boldy, and Duhame, the beads and the braids that they got. (laughs) I saw that and I was like, all right. I just, I genuinely hope that they bring that back to Minnesota first home game. I hope you guys, I hope they still have the beats in their hair and you can, (laughs) I can't imagine a helmet feels too great on that. Right. Cause they got the beads and then I'm sure the braids, which is something you did in like middle school. It would be awful. Yeah. Sleeping on that. Do you think that they still have that in their hair right now? They have to. So I was never fortunate enough to go to Mexico on spring break. I had to go ice fishing and like do stupid hotel things. Like we didn't have the money to go to Mexico. But I remember you always knew those people that went on spring break because they'd come back and they'd still have the beads in their hair, right? And the things. But then when you also, when you take it out, your hair goes like poof, right? Like I want one or the other. I want to see the braids in person or I want to see the poof in person. Um, I want to see both. Yeah. Yeah. Or both or both. This is true. I feel like Duhame's hair. Can we also shout out that Brandon Duhame in that photo? Again, you guys can find this on Instagram, Twitter. It kind of made its rounds of the those three young guys posing with these beads in their hair. Uh, but Duhame looks like that look fits him, right? Like, I don't know if it's the way that he's posing. Like, it was a vibe. And then you have Dewar, who looks like he's trying way too hard. And then you've got Boldy, who the beads, because he has kind of that like middle part to the side, the beads hang in his face very awkwardly. Again, looks like a great time. It's just so funny to analyze that type of photo of these professional hockey players. I just, this is the kind of content I want. I want to, (laughs) I just want to see more of this stuff because especially for Connor Dewar, it seems so out of pocket. And I mean this in the nicest way. I They have personalities, but we don't see it very often from like Duhame or Dewar for Dewey one, Dewey two. Why am I using their actual names? Um, <laughs> but we don't see their full personalities. And I think we're seeing it really for the first time on this trip. So I think people are just so taken aback and really just loving it. But for real, this is what fans want to see. Like show us more of, what you like to do on vacation, whether it's getting beads in your hair or whatnot, like let's see more of it. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for bearing with me through this episode. We are to my final favorite moment of season four, and we're going back to episode 182, one of our more recent ones, but this one was a lot of fun. And that's my favorite thing about getting to do this podcast too, is when we get to just let loose and have fun. Producer Fred made his comeback on the podcast where we got to have him back on for this episode. And they also allowed me to talk about Taylor Swift. And they unfortunately gave me a 60 second time restraint and I kept talking and they muted me and I didn't know I was muted. So clearly- I can go on for a lot longer than that. But episode 182 just all around was a lot of fun with those two. Unfortunately, I didn't have a voice, but in a weird way, it really added to the vibe of this whole episode. So here is what I picked out as my favorite part. Good morning. We're here. We're here. And your voice is like, um, I don't want to say terrible, but terrible is probably a good word. It's it's scratchy. It's hoarse. It's Matt Dumba-esque. If you will, you know, I think Matt Dumba sounds like that quite a bit. Um, Hilarious side note, because 
this is funny. There was um, one time Shipley, who writes for the Pioneer Press, was covering a uh, training camp for Dane Musitani at the time. And and he just isn't around the team as much, right? And everybody knows Matt Dumba has a very quiet kind of voice. And he kind of talks like this. And that's just Matt Dumba. And so Shipley is like, oh, so were you yelling a lot out there? Or like, what's going on with your voice? And Dumba was like, it's just it's how I sound. Like, oh, no. Hilarious. But you don't just sound like that. 30 second timer, Fred, please cue up the 30 second timer for Kirsten to I'm talk ready. about the Taylor Swift heiress tour. Ready? Yeah, I need a deep breath. Okay. Go. It was Go. the most amazing night of my entire life. Uh, my friend Kenny, he had a 15 foot plush snake. He put glitter all over it. We named her Karen. He was wearing her all night. Um, we got downpoured on leaving the concert. I, my boots were soaking wet. They're still wet. I checked on them this morning. That was my favorite outfit I've ever worn. We exchanged friendship bracelets. I spent hours making them. I traded a couple of them. Um, she sang a lot of my favorite songs. She talked about John Mayer and performed Dear John for the first time in 11 years. It was such an incredible. She's muted. Her time's up. That's what we That's what we do. That's how we cut it off. <laughs> <laughs> and now I have to unmute. I don't know how to unmute you, though. There's you. That okay. was mean. <laughs> that was rude. You were out of time. I told you 30 seconds. I was still talking. <laughs> yeah, 30 seconds. That's what they do. That's the TV rules, right, Fred? Oh, definitely. I was, we were giving you the wrap, and you just blew right through the stop sign. Mm-hmm. I feel like I was cut off a little early. <laughs> that alarm, I had the alarm go off. There was literally, I had the phone alarm going off. You were the only one that could see that alarm. I would like to call a mulligan. <laughs> Pretty sure you could hear on the audio. We'll replay it and you'll hear it. I am. I am so happy that you got to experience that and live your best life. So, so good. Again, maybe I will be a little less unhinged as we go into season five. No promises, however. Um, But next week, you guys will have producer Fed's favorite moments from season four. Thank you guys for listening. Again, I am really appreciative of all of our listeners. You guys taking the time each and every week to tune in and give us your thoughts. We love interacting with you guys. And I'm really excited just to see what we can continue to do in season five think there's a lot of really fun stuff that is coming up the way so thank you guys and as always thank you to our friends at talk north grain belt jim beam livia and royal credit union we'll see you guys next time